and welcome to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I started an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. Now at Oxford Clay, I don't just make pottery, I also make resources such as books and courses and information for other potters who want to be more eco-conscious in their pottery practice but maybe don't know where to start or can't find out the information they need so that's what this podcast is all about it's about sharing everything i've learned along my eco-conscious pottery journey with you and i can't wait to get started so let's go Hello, welcome back to the Otter Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm your host, Catherine Tomlinson, and um, welcome to episode two of the five part series on creating colour in pottery eco consciously. Um, and that is because we're celebrating the release of a new book um, called Eco Conscious Pottery Colour A Guide to Colouring Ceramics with Scrap Metals, Glass, Plant, Ash, and Clay, which will be re- released on the 14th of September 2024 which will be available from the Oxford Clay website and also Amazon as well, if you want like a paper copy of the book. Um, So the book contains 80 recipes that are made um, with eco-conscious colorants. And it's about four ways of creating color in pottery without using commercial metal oxides. So last week in episode one of this series, we talked about commercial metal oxides and how you know they can create quite a lot of pollution when they are mined from the earth, how they're a non-renewable resource, you know, which is depleting over time. Um, we talked about the fact that the artisanal mining sector can be um, quite um, like a big part of the supply chain of some metal oxides. Um, we talked about, um, how it's really important to conserve resources you know as part of like this new economic model of like the circular economy thinking about how the earth's natural resources can be like repurposed recycled and um that's what we're going to be getting into today in today's episode we're going to be talking about how metals scrap metals in this uh episode two um, of the series we're going to be talking about how metals can be recycled into pottery colorants into metal oxides effectively so right let's get let's get into it um okay so right what we're going to be talking about today is two metals we're going to be talking about iron and we're also going to be talking about copper um okay so let's talk about iron first so okay you've probably seen iron when it um, when it oxidizes it actually goes rusty so uh, you know lots of yeah there's lots of rusty metal around and as potters we can actually use rust that top layer of like iron oxide which has been created um you know when the uh the iron has oxidized in the atmosphere and with moisture we can use rust in our pottery to create color so yeah rust is rust is such an interesting um colorant because it's um it's very very orange when you've kind of sanded it off metal um but um in glazes it often creates these really beautiful kind of deep rich kind of brown colors um it often creates like a speckledy kind of effect in glazes um and it can be mixed as well with other um eco-conscious colorants to just create some really really beautiful glaze effects so yeah like i said to you there's 80 recipes in um eco-conscious pottery color so yeah lots of those use rust um so essentially what we're doing as potters is just like sanding that top layer off collecting the rust as a powder and then we can use that in our pottery glazes to create color okay but the second way that we can recycle metals uh, into pottery color is we can use copper and um, the process is slightly more involved with copper because what we're um, what we're doing and the process I go through in in the book eco conscious pottery color is using um, metal uh, using copper wire which has been you know from old electrical items that like don't work I actually collect mine from like charity shops that can't sell those electrical goods because they're broken and what I do is I strip the wire of the plastic casing I kind of create it make it into a kind of like a wire nest um, and wires 
is brilliant to use because that copper is like fantastic for creating oxide um, and it's got very large surface area so lots of oxide can be created with like quite a small amount of wire um, and the oxide that's created from copper is called verdigris and I have spoken about verdigris like before on the on the podcast I absolutely love love verdigris it creates absolutely beautiful colors in pottery glazes um, so yeah I've been experimenting like all all over this summer um, with verdigris and I also mixing it with different things like different plant ashes and clays and I've created some like incredible colors with verdigris so although verdigris is a kind of greeny um just think if I've got some around here <laughs> If you're watching the video um, on YouTube, um, yeah, I've got a little, if you're listening on the podcast, I'll just describe it. It's a kind of like bowl of bare degree. It's like a kind of, um, it's, it's a very, very green substance when it, when you actually make it from the copper wire. Um, you can also make bare degree actually with uh, brass and bronze, anything with like, you know, copper in, any metal with copper in, but it works really, really well if you use copper wire. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very bright green um, oxide that you make with the copper wire. We're basically just um, oxidizing it with salt, a salt and vinegar solution. So it's like a very easy process and then just crumbling the verdigris off. Um, but the colors that you can make with verdigris are so beautiful. So they range from like a kind of light blue to um like a very very deep like sea green you know and you can mix it with other colorants like i said with like you know rust um you can mix it with a uh, clay i've mixed in the um in this book in eco-conscious pottery color i've mixed it with red clay and it makes this incredibly like bright bright green um glaze um and you don't need much to create like really really vivid colors as well so yeah so it's it's an amazing coloring it's absolutely brilliant um and yeah like i said to you there's 80 recipes many of those use fair degree um yeah bright like beautiful light blues sea greens bright, bright, grassy greens. You can make those all with fair degree. Um, okay, right. So why? let's look about why you'd want to use uh, recycled scrap metal into your uh, pottery colour. There are four reasons. So the first reason is that you're essentially, you're taking something which is already in the supply chain like the metals, they've already, all that energy has gone into creating those metals and we can recycle them as potters. So we can be part of that circular economic model. We can take these like, you know, incredible natural resources. They're so precious that have already, they've already been extracted from the earth. Um, and we can, we can use these, you know, rather than just like chuck these electrical products like away the wires whatever away into landfill we can make pottery color from them um that will never cease to like just amaze me so much it's yeah it's it's incredible so um it's a way of recycling that metal we don't want it to go to landfill we don't want it to go to waste we can recycle it into our pottery um okay so the second reason is that it reduces mining so think about we're you know we're using the metal that's already like i said already in the supply chain we're not having to like you know, rely on these fresh resources, fresh, like new uh, raw materials to be mined, metal ores to be mined and then made into metal oxides. We are already using what's already there. So we're reducing the, um, the need for mining raw materials. Um, okay, the third reason I touched on this a little bit is that you can create like really, really unique glaze colors. So, um, like you know there's only a certain kind of amount of like you know commercial metal oxides they're kind of quite standardized they'll be you know it's probably the same kind of purity in terms of this you know they'll be the same kind of um you know if you use them at the same concentration in glazes or whatever you know you you'll get the kind of same like look of glazes whereas like um making your own metal oxides you know from like rust or, or copper um you can create these like incredible shades of glazes which like of colors in glazes which like you can't really get with commercial metal oxides um like beautiful kind of earthy tones like more kind of subtle colors like more kind of beautiful like the the range of kind of greens you can get green sea greens light blues are just yeah it really is amazing so um the colors are like really unique that you can get with um by making your own metal oxides um from recycled metal okay and then the fourth reason is just that it's um it can be cheaper for potters to do so 
you know, what we're doing is we're just taking like maybe scrap, like you might even just find scrap metal. You know, I've seen like scrap, like iron just out on the, <laughs> walking about on the pavement, you know, someone's left like an old rusty wheelbarrow out or something and they don't want it and it's rubbish. Um, you know, we, we can like, we can sometimes get this metal just completely for free. Like when I buy um, the electrical goods from the charity shop, um, I pay them like a, like more than they would get like if they just sold it like for scrap metal but um but it's still you know much more cost effective than if i bought like a commercial metal oxide and then you know if you're um oxidizing your own copper all you're using is um you're using just salt and vinegar and so you know those are really like low cost um I'm just having this thought. I said oil and vinegar earlier in the episode. So just like, it's just gone in my brain. I'm like, did I say oil and vinegar? It's not oil and vinegar, it's salt and vinegar. So hopefully I didn't say that, but yeah, you just use salt and vinegar. Um, and it, that's the solution that you spray the copper with and then it and then it makes fair degree. So yeah, which, you know, they're very cheap materials um, and you just do it in the open air, just in a glass bowl or something. Um, and like, you know, rust doesn't need anything. It's just doing its own thing. It's just oxidizing itself when you're just sanding that top layer off so wearing an ffp for three face mask um yeah and obviously being very very careful i need to say this actually like being really really careful not to cut yourself on any like scrap metal and if you do you need to seek medical attention there's a thing called tetanus which can be like super dangerous so it's like yeah just um just be like really really careful when you're working with scrap metal um yeah okay on that note <laughs> um well yeah so so yeah so like i said it's um using using you know copper and iron uh, and like turning that back into metal oxides and you know using it in our in our pottery uh, to color our pottery glazes is just amazing it's just um i've had so much fun like creating different recipes over the summer it's been like yeah it's been so good and seeing how they work like i said with like different things like ashes ash different plant ashes and like adding clay to them and seeing how that affects the color and it's been like really 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 fun like creating different recipes so it's an amazing way to color pottery so that's the um the episode the episode two which is like the first way of creating um color eco-consciously in pottery and yeah thank you so much for joining me for this episode and i really really can't wait to uh jo yeah to see you on the next episode where we'll be talking about um using glass uh scrap glass in pottery and how we can use that in our in our work to add like color um yeah it's really really cool so until then wishing you very very happy potting and i will see you on the next episode to talk all about glass and how we can use that and um yeah I'll see you then. Okay, bye. Oh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you're interested to learn more about eco-conscious pottery or making your pottery more eco-conscious and sustainable, there's so much for you on the Oxford Clay website, which is www.oxfordclay.co.uk. I can't wait to see you there.